Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dor and I made it. Yes, I think I made it. I think I made it. I don't want to jinx this, but I think I made it. Made what, you ask? Well, I managed to move. Move to Stockholm, you ask? No, I moved to Amsterdam. Don't be confused. I have moved to Amsterdam and it, really I lived outside of uh, Amsterdam for quite some time in a basement, in a shitty basement. But now I have upgraded. I'm one of those YouTubers who started off in a basement, but now I've upgraded. Now I actually have a studio. Now I actually have some place to shoot videos where I get decent lighting, nice view, a great place to be, live, to make food, awesome food, burritos, you name it. Uh, today I'm gonna make stampot, yeah, mashed potatoes with schnitzel. And okay, it's time I give you a round tour. Here it is. I have. This is my kitchen area, already quite messy. I am a busy person. I can create a lot of dishes in very little time. Cat box, a bookshelf, a vinyl player, bathroom in the door behind there, a cabinet, a bedroom, a couch, living room, TV, and perfect view from the 13th floor. Yes. I'm living the dream of uh, being in Amsterdam and uh, creating videos and working part time. And let me tell you about these past two months. Okay, it started with taking this apartment deal. Two months ago, we took this apartment. It was a question we didn't know. We didn't know if we should take it or not. I didn't know if I could afford it. I couldn't afford it. Two, uh, one week after taking the apartment, I got a job. I went and applied for a job. I got it immediately. It was perfect. Everything went so smoothly. Then I started working part time first. And now I'm transitioning a little more to 32 hours a month or something like that. And that's perfect for me. That gives me time to be with all of you to still work on this, to still create, to still be me. And that's all I need, really. And then uh, after taking the job, well, my girlfriend had surgery, nothing complicated, nothing crazy, she just had a basic surgery, but, you know, recovery from surgery is still a difficult process. I've had to help her with almost all the basic things that she might need, and it's been a lot of work, it's demanded a lot of me, it's been, it's put me in a very stressed position, it uh, was a lot of work to do, but it's also something very important, every one of us has to sometime take care of someone we love or be it a family member, a partner, a wife, or whatever. We're all gonna be in that position at some point. Really, I've just been absorbing all of these masses of experience at the same time, from, well, moving to a new country, to moving again to a bigger city, to getting a normal job, a part-time job, getting back from, well, I've gone from being a student to, well, this is my first real job, really. I've always done non-profit work for charities and for other organizations. So this is really the first real thing I do in a way. And then uh, we had a trip to Edinburgh. <laughs> Yeah, uh, in the middle of all that, we had already booked a trip like three months ago to Edinburgh. And we were like, should we cancel it? Well, you've had surgery. Should you be able to fly? Should we go? We're going to move the day after we come back. Should we go? I don't know. And we did. And we, it really was the greatest decision. It was the best decision. Uh, being in Edinburgh again, getting that redo was so important. Getting a chance to actually experience the city, to actually take it in, to have a good time to have mac and cheese that was so important for me because uh, you know when you are constantly preoccupied with work and with all of that you forget about what's most important you know living life spending time with the people you care about having a chance to actually connect and to talk about real things not just about work and practical matters so important so important don't forget that schedule in free time even no matter how stressful it is find one day where you can relax always find one day where you can relax or a week in edinburgh and the uh, it's worth the hassle it is it is it's worth the delays and the flights it's worth the extra pressure if you can get the chance to actually breathe and to calm down and to have space for a bit now the move how did it go well 
uh, since my girlfriend had surgery, she basically couldn't do a lot at all. So I had to do most things by myself, from packing everything together, selling all the furniture, uh, having it picked up, moving things back and forth, uh, and then getting it here. I had uh, We got a moving company that helped us. They were super smooth, student moving company, perfect. They did a great job. And then uh, we... Um, came here and the, the building is new, completely refurbished, everything is new, everything is built from scratch, right, and open just like now. So everyone was moving in at the same time, so we had a system for everything. There were people helping out in every station, from elevators to packing and things together, and from unpacking and everything. So we had a lot of help putting it all together. And then uh, my girlfriend's uh, sister and her sister's boyfriend came to help and they were such an amazing help. They did so much, seriously. Uh, they were like here all weekend, uh, putting things together, helping me with like this uh, really annoying Pax wardrobe and with uh, the couch. Uh, like putting IKEA furniture together is real work. It's tough work. It's a true teamwork experience to get to know another person, to work together with another person, to explain things back and forth. And then the Pax wardrobe. Oh my god, a Pax wardrobe. If you're ever thinking about getting a Pax wardrobe, don't. It's so much work putting it together. It's so much stress. Like, um, we had so many issues and mistakes. The thing is, we got the second-hand one. It was, uh, had already been montated, but then demontated. And things were not really working as they should. There were some damaged parts and railings and stuff. So getting it together and getting the screws together and getting things to stick together and to be safe yeah, that was so difficult and getting it up here to begin with, the elevator, it didn't fit in the elevator. Seriously, how did it not fit in the elevator? We had to walk up 13 stairs carrying a wardrobe. <laughs> Have you ever carried a wardrobe up 13 stairs? It's 2.3 meters uh, in length. Uh, and then it's wide, pretty thick, pretty heavy. I don't know how much it weighed, but we got it up 13 stairs because it didn't fit in the elevator. And here we are, here we are in the apartment. Basically right now all I can do is just grab this one and then go sit in the couch and just take, have a good time. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make mashed potatoes, I'm gonna have dinner, I'm gonna have a good time, I'm gonna watch uh, some Netflix. I'm gonna just enjoy things. Tomorrow I'm getting back to work. As you hear, I have a bit of a cold, that's why I'm still home. But tomorrow I'm getting back to work, back to the real world and to everything that's going on and soon soon I'll be making videos again soon I'll be posting content again and soon things will be happening again I'm already I have two articles in store for you all on personality hacker personality hacker has asked me to write articles for them two a month about the Enneagram in particular and Enneagram and MTI and uh, you're going to be able to look forward to that. There are articles on INFJ, Enneagram variations, and how the Enneagram and the moods manifest in INFJ and the INFP. And then perhaps I'll write it about the ENFP, the ENFJ, perhaps the ENTJ, the INTP. And we'll, we'll go from there forward. Basically, it's all about predicting how each Enneagram manifests in each personality type. And yeah. That's all for today. Thank you all for tuning in and for checking out what's going on in my life. A lot of you have been messaging me, asking me what's going on. And here's it. Here's what's going on. Nothing is going on. Finally, nothing is going on. Well, okay. Actually, something terrible happened. The bed broke during the move. The bed is broken. We have to get a new bed. Yeah, there's always something. But what I'm telling myself is always something coming up. What I'm trying to tell myself right now is... Not everything has to come together at once. I'm fine sleeping on a broken bed. I'm fine that there's a big hole in half the bed. I'll just lay on the parts that are not broken for now. And if it breaks down, I'll sleep on the mattress. And if the mattress breaks down, I'll sleep on the floor. I'll be okay with that. One month from now, I'll get a new bed. I'll just wait a bit. I, seriously, there's been too much. And uh, there is a point where you just have to just uh, not want to fix all first world problems at one time. Realize like, uh, yeah, it's still pretty good. Like uh, our lamp is broken in the, f uh, didn't work in the ceiling. Uh, so we're gonna have to need help for that. But it's still pretty good. It's all pretty good. It's all going well. It's a great place. I'm just gonna try to relax and try to not get too carried away by all of the shit. And 
let things come together slowly now because I think I've earned to let things to come together a little 